Um, all right. <laughs> all right. So, so I want to transition because the first time I ever heard of your name was in regards to Errol Spence. And there was this big to do about Errol Spence now has a quote unquote new manager. And all of a sudden they're saying, oh, well, Al's fired, Al's fired, you know, all that good <laughs> stuff. So can you explain to the people what you do versus what Al Heyman does as an advisor? And to be honest with you, man, like, you know, Al and, and Errol have had a great relationship since he was in the Olympics, man. And same thing with Errol and myself. I've been friends with him since, you know, before he went to the to the Olympics. Uh, but, you know, Al is a magician, man. Al makes big things happen in regards to the networks and things of that nature. So, um, you know, Al is a heavy hitter. And not saying that I'm not, but, you know, Al is not day-to-day -day dealing with the fighters day-to-day, -day, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, make it, he's not doing it. Al is, is, you know what I'm saying, dealing with networks. And he put the old PBC together uh, with his team of people. So, you know, people, when they went off on that tangent, they just didn't understand Errol Spence and I have been working together for the longest time, man. Like his his glove deal with Everlast, I think all all three of those negotiations were done by me. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just this like big thing that we put out, but um, I've always been in the shadows of his career, negotiating different things and you know overseeing certain things and making sure certain things were done. And I didn't want no recognition for it or no. Money for Errol is that's, that's like my family, man. It's like my brother. So, um, then when people kind of went on, oh, I guess there's no more Al. He's fine. I'm like, bro, fans just come up with anything and they do it just to make conversation. And I get it, it's hot for social media, but I'll let any fighter know, man. It takes a team, just like it takes a village to you know bring up the kids and the community, bro. In boxing, it takes a really good team, which is essentially same thing as a village and just the different communities. It takes a good team of people. To, to get to a level of success. And, and Errol Spence Jr. had a very good team, has a very good team in regards to, you know, Al, Sylvia, and um, hell, even you know, myself, his, his team, Jordan, his pops. Like, EJ has a really good nucleus of, of people around him. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't want to, you know, respect to Al and his people, but there was no Al is fired. Nah, they're going to, when EJ retires, Al him is still going to, it's still gonna be there. Like that's his that's his guy, and I'm still gonna be there because I'm his guy. It's just, that's what it is. Yep. So let me ask you this, and I gotta ask you this because we have so many Errol Spence followers on this channel. They call us an Errol Spence channel, if you will, and that's that's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, we got bashed after EJ lost, uh, and he hasn't been back for quite some time. You know, it's been out there for a while that Fundora is 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 going to be the next fight personally. And this is just based on conversations that I've had with people behind the scenes. It doesn't feel that way. Right. Um, so any update on the status of Errol Spence, uh, people are looking for his return. And I think a lot of people will be excited once a fight is announced for Errol. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm pretty sure he's going to fight again. It's just, you know, he, he does things on his time. Mm -hmm. he's not he's not rushing for social media he's not rushing for anybody man so you know took took his first loss a tough loss against against terence crawford and you know he'll be back it's just it'll be on his time at, at his pace so uh when who where all that jazz man y'all will get that announcement when it, it comes out but you know do this he's um i actually saw him today brian norman jr and i went went out to see him at his ranch Mm -hmm. uh in dallas and you know just he he's growing up now man i've been i've been around e since he was younger you know saying first starting his career and just to see him now as a as a father and you know he's done very well for himself as a businessman i'm just i'm proud of my homie man i'm, I'm just really proud of him yeah you gotta tell brian to let me come to the gym man i don't want to just show up unannounced so uh but yeah I'm, I'm i'm in his area so i would love to talk to him um, yeah, no, you, should, you should just show up on the notes, bro. It's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's just okay. If that's cool, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, one last question that I have for you, and I do. I, I want to get your your perspective on Turkey Alashik. Um, and, and I'm going to give you my perspective really quickly, so you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I've heard, uh, and it's been put out there that Turkey Alashik is essentially losing money on these fights. A lot of people will give me pressure because I, I say that this is not necessarily good for boxing. I get that fighters get the opportunity to go over there and earn a big bag 
But at the end of the day, you can't get used to that big bag if it's not necessarily putting if the economics really do, doesn't make sense. Um, and so he's coming over. He's getting into it with fighters. Uh, you know, he's he's trying to generate a buzz over here. I think people believe that he's going to take over with Eddie Hearns and all this other stuff. And, and maybe all that's true, but it's concerning to me that you have someone coming in, losing money. And at the end of the day, we need investors. We need promoters. We need people that are putting up the money because if they're not, then you don't have fights. And then the fighters are going to have to put up that money. And I'm pretty sure they don't want to do that, right? So what are your thoughts on on uh, Turkey Alashik and what he's currently bringing to the game? To me, he's not doing anything different than what Al Heyman did a decade or so ago, like coming in and like Al really – I really changed the landscape of, of boxing. You know, I was I was managing during that time, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I I I was able to feel the change that, that occurred. Yeah. And a lot of people, he put a lot of people out of business, man. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of people that just tapped out or bow out bowed out because you know, Al had the game in the in a chokehold essentially and a lot of people didn't survive yeah. at that time. So to me, bro, he's not doing in respect to what he's doing, you know what I'm saying? Because it's you know, it was putting on fights and, and fighters were getting paid. Um, so respect to what he's doing, but like you know, I think people are just people get overly excited about anything. But I'm like, bro, he's not doing anything differently than what Al Heyman did. Like I said, when he first started PBC. So you know, I, I wish um, you know, Turkey Alashik the best and you know, to keep putting on the shows. And you know, I think the Saudis just have so much money to where they're losing money. They they don't care. So if they don't care and they're going to continue putting on the fights, um, you know, yeah, good luck. That's the, the really thing, the best I can say. But I don't, I'm not going to be like, oh, man, it's just some, like, great for boxing. It's amazing. I hope he, you know, I, I hope it's consistent. But to me, he's not doing anything different than what Al did a decade uh, ago. So I just, you know, I hope they, they all start working together meaning you know matchroom queensberry golden boy top range I, I just hope it's they all start working together and if turkey alashik is going to be the one to kind of bring that together to where we're able to effortlessly see the fights that you know we want to see then cool but you know i've i don't know if i think i read something about you know he doesn't want to deal with like managers he don't want to deal with middlemen he wants yeah. to talk to the to the fighters you know, I have an issue with that because there's protocol. The fighters are going to just be geeked up for whatever. But if the paperwork is not right, then, you know, they're the ones that get the short end of the stick, which has been that way for decades, man. So, you know, as long as business is handled correctly, I'm all for them being in the business. But, you know, just go about it correctly, man. I don't try to weed out the people that are in, actually in the best interest of the, the fighters. Unless you're going to start a union. For the fighters, that's similar to the MBPA. You know, I know he's putting a lot of money in the boxing. If you're going to try to weed out the middlemen, then okay, take a couple million dollars, put it into a union, and you know, have pretty much. I know it's weird. I say union, but the fighters are not. Um, they're not employees. So hell, start a council to where the fighters have different rights and the fighters have different. Um, the managers are, are regulated, or if you're not going to do managers. The promoters are regulated in regards to how much they can take. Break it all the way down to where the fighters don't get the short end of the stick at the at the end of the day. But I got no problem with homie being in the business. Just do this shit the right way. Adrian, I appreciate you joining the platform. Uh, very informative. And if I can ever get you on again, I would love to get you on specifically to talk about these types of topics because I think they're very educational for the fans and that gives them the opportunity and the ability to understand some of the things that they're seeing on social media. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will say that the, the fans are not going to care. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a running joke. Me and EJ talk about it all the time. He's like, bro, damn fans, they don't they don't care. It's just, it's a it's an interesting topic to just keep going and going back and forth with someone about who's better and all that. But once you start getting into the business side and the money, I'm like, bro, like y'all don't understand. So just keep that out. Keep that out of your argument. Just talk about who's better and who will beat who. But once you start getting into, oh, well, you know, he made such and such last fight. He should just take this. Of course, you're saying that because you probably don't make either of those amounts. So in your mind, you'll automatically take it. But if you've been in this, 
And like I said, you hear seven figures, seven figure fight, but then at the end of the fight, they hand you a check for six figures. You have a problem with that, regardless of how much money you made your last fight. So uh, the fans don't care, but it's it's all love either way. But I appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you being on. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Later. Please.